Hey there, so this is our Turbo XT. Now, an important part of installing a new XT is quite often low-level formatting the hard drive and reinstalling MS-DOS. So I've done it with this machine already as a bit of a practice run, and I thought I'd step you guys through it and do it again, um, just to show you. Now, it does vary machine to machine, but this is very common for an XT with an XT-based hard drive controller. If you have the original IBM hard drive controller, you're going to need to use either a tool like SpeedStore or you're going to need a tool like um, the IBM Advanced Diagnostics Diskette. Uh, that's because there's no formatting program on the card's ROM. Now in this case, I'm using a Western Digital card um, that can be configured for any hard drive type, so I actually have to use that ROM-based program to set it up properly. Um, and for most aftermarket XT cards, it's going to be like that. So the first thing I've done here is I've created myself a boot disk. And the reason for this is we're going to need this to prepare our system. So I've formatted it, gone format a colon slash s, made it into a MS-DOS boot disk so the machine's going to boot off it, and then I've copied a few files across. So when you do the format, it should copy command.com by itself. First is debug.com. We're going to need that to access the memory location where our little hard drive formatter is on the card. We've got format.com to format the hard drive later. We've got fdisk to partition it. And we've got sys.com, just in case we're formatting the hard drive and we forget to put slash s. Rather than doing it again, we can just use sys. Um, so that is, I've still got 200 kilobytes free on this 360k floppy. So that's great. So now I'm just going to try and boot off that floppy drive. Now this machine is having a few boot problems if I leave the turbo on. So I'm going to try and turn the turbo off. I think it's a little bit fast for some of the cards. And there's a bit of a delay here. Come on, baby. There we go. And as you can see, my problem. Now we're at the MS-DOS prompt. Lovely. So our first step for preparing our hard drive and configuring our Western Digital card. Now if you're wondering, this is a Western Digital 1002 MFM controller and we're using a Tandon TM502. Uh, it's a 10 megabyte MFM hard drive. So the first thing we do is run debug by just typing in debug. And we get this little hyphen prompt. It doesn't look like much, but that's basically your command prompt for debug. So now what we're going to do is we're going to tell debug to go to memory location equals C800 colon 5. Now, 90% of XT cards use this same memory address, so I always try this first. Some cards they did put it in different locations, like CC00, and some are colon 1 and colon something else. So you can always look your card up on the internet. It's probably a good idea to do that anyway. And here you see here, we have the Super BIOS Formatter Revision 2.4 from Western Digital Corp, 1987. And it says current drive is C, um, which is your first drive, and that's what we want. So we're just going to press return. The current interleave is 3. That's a pretty good start, to be honest. Are you dynamically configuring the drive? Now, these cards come with some built-in types, and if you're using a built-in type, you can set the jumpers and you can just go no and let it do its business. In my case, it doesn't support this hard drive. So we need to go yes, I'm going to dynamically configure the drive. And now it's going to ask me for things like the cylinders, the heads, um, reduced right cylinder, and all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to enter that, I'll just do it in one line. Now a lot of the smarter controllers, like the Western Digital XT Gen, um, the interface is a lot better. Uh, this is probably one of the harder ones to use. So I've got 306 cylinders, I've got four heads, reduced right cylinder, I'm trying to remember which way around these are, um, I'm just going to go 0 and then 128 for the second one, I'll have to check if that's right later. And for these next two I don't know what they are, so I'm just going to use the default, which are 11 and 5. Right, that's correct, so then we hit enter. Are you virtually configuring the drive? Now what this lets you do is it uh, if you know sort of how you partition a hard drive into separate sections, this is actually going to let you do that at the low level. So even FDisk was going to think there's actually two hard drives in the system. We don't want to do that. But you could if you, if you really needed to. And that would let you have like basically two primary partitions, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to go no. And it says press Y to begin formatting drive C with interleave 0 at 3. So yes. And away she goes. Quite often with these old drives, uh, something else you've got to keep in mind is that most of them had bad sectors uh, from the factory, brand new. So if you do find a handful of bad sectors on your MFM hard drive, don't panic. 
Um, it's they're probably the original ones and there should be a sticker on the top of your drive and that should actually have them listed and you can use that to determine if there's any new ones. Um, quite often you'll see them start if the low level format hasn't been done for a long time you'll actually see these starting to pop up uh, and that's because the, the sector marks eventually get lost. Um, usually I find with drives after a low level format the bad sectors disappear. Um, well the new ones anyway and they don't come back. Now if you do a low level format and that the drive formats in DOS fine and there's no bad sectors or, or extra ones and then all of a sudden they start appearing again that's a good sign your drive's actually on the way out because it's actually having trouble writing um, but in that in the case of like this one because I've tested it and most of my other MFM drives all they need 90% of the time if they're spinning and they're not working all that is usually a low level format or a cabling problem they're incredibly reliable um, if you do get one, try to get a five and a quarter inch one, um, just because they seem to be a lot more rugged. Um, in the early 90s, late 80s, they were making a lot of these three and a half inch drives, a dime a dozen, as cheap as possible, and pushing capacity limits, and a lot of those drives can be problematic. Um, in that form factor, I have more dead drives than good drives, and in five and a quarter inch, I only have one drive that doesn't work out of about 12. Okay, so now it's asking me if I want to... Um, Basically, it says format bad tracks, but what it actually means is, do you want me to tell you which tracks not to use? I can't remember what's written on the drive, so who cares? DOS will mark it for me. And format successful. The system will now restart. Um, now, the painful thing about this is, like I said, with this machine, it is having trouble rebooting. So we're just going to cross fingers that it works correctly. And if it doesn't, I'll just edit them out. No, nope, I hear disc noises, we're booting. Oh, I'm all excited now. And we're in. Alright, so the next thing we need to do is run fdisk and partition our new hard drive. Now create a DOS partition, create a primary one, and I definitely want to use the entire size of this drive because it's only 10 megabytes, and cutting that into 5 megabyte partitions would be silly. There goes the hard drive light. And now another cross your fingers reboot. Now I have some suspicions as to why my reboot problem is happening. It's just because I can get it to start, it's not terribly urgent. So I haven't fixed it. Yeah. It does only seem to do it when the video card's in CGA mode, so that could be a good hint. But it's behaving now. That's, that's a good booty noise. Alright. Okay, so now we've got a C drive, but we can't read it. Well, it's interesting with DOS 3.3, even though I haven't formatted it yet, didn't error. And the newer versions of DOS that would have a fit if you tried doing that. Okay, so back to A drive. I'm going to format C colon, and we're going to do it slash S, and that's going to copy over our system folders so the machine can read off the hard drive. All data on non-removable disk drive C will be lost. There's nothing on it. So I'm going to go with the yes. And there you go. It's showing you what head it's on and what cylinder it's on. It's good. Oh, there's a bad sector. When you see it slow down like that, that means it's found a bad sector. And this drive does have a few of them. And they were from the factory. It's got a very long sheet of paper stuck to it that's turned yellow like bad newspaper. And there's one around 56 or 57. I think on head 2. It really holds up. There it goes. Okay, so we've got 10.5 megs of space, um, 86 kilobytes used by the system. So if I go C drive now, you've got command.com on there and 10 megs free. So that's pretty much the hard drive done. The, the next thing to do is, well, we'll see if it boots. This is always new breaking. And go control it, delete. And we're going to see if she starts. Now in the process of low level formatting that drive, I've also, what has happened is the Western Digital Controller has written the hard drive settings to the first track of this hard drive. So when it boots up, you see the, the light will flash, and that's the controller getting its settings, and that's how it knows to boot. And that's why these cards don't have a battery in them. Yep, booting up the hard drive. 
Now you see here it's going to ask us to enter the time and date again and we get to this lovely prompt. Now here's some pro tips for you. One of the first things you always want to do to make your system sort of feel more natural is to create a config.sys and an autoexec.bat file. That will eliminate this. You can always put that in there if you want. Personally, if you're just playing games and stuff, you don't really need to enter the date every time you turn the thing on. So, this is a good thing. Now, okay, with older versions of DOS, you don't have a nice text edit utility. And if you don't have one handy, maybe that's a good thing to put on your utility disk if you find one you like. But if you don't have it, your only option in MS-DOS 3.3 was really Edlin, and it was terrible. But there is a trick that works on even the oldest version of DOS, and that's that you can copy a file from the console, which is your keyboard and monitor, to a file. So we're going to do that now. We go copy con space config.sys, and we get a new line. Now this is where we were typing our stuff for config.sys. Now I'll maybe later on I will configure this machine better, but for the moment I really don't give a toss about what's in here. So I'm just going to go Control Z. So hold down Control and press Z. You'll get this funny character. You press Enter. And now if I go do, you'll see I've got a config.sys file in there. So let's do the same for auto exec like that. So copy con auto exec like that. Okay, so the first thing I do, um, now if you're using an op, like a like DOS 2 or something, echo off, I don't think it actually works. So the first thing I do on DOS 3.3 is echo off, just because when you run a batch file, I don't know if you've ever seen it, and you create an auto exec file, you can see it typing the command in every line, and it doesn't look very tidy. So I'm going to put echo off to try and get that working. And then I'm going to go path equals c colon backslash dos. Now I haven't created this directory yet, um, but I'm going to put it there, so I want that to be there. Then I'm going to go prompt $p $g. Now this is probably the most common command prompt to use in MS-DOS and the reason for that is it shows you what your current folder is and it gives you that same little closing arrow. Then I want it to clear the screen and that's it and I go without pressing enter because if you press enter it runs another command. So you go control Z and then press enter and now we've got a what do we exec dot Okay so let's try that out now. Just going to reboot. Hydro flash, it's the controller loading its settings. And we'll wait till we're ready. Now, at this point, I'm not 100% sure what this machine is doing. There's this big delay. There goes the floppy drive. And there's the hard drive. We're booting. And there, no date, time, prompt. Nice and clean. Go ver MS DOS version 3.3.